Curious George Gets a Medal. This is the fourth book from the Curious George series that were written by the original author. There are some others that have been written since then, and there's a movie and a TV show that you might be familiar with, but I really love these original ones, and the reason why is because they really are adventures. With a story, sometimes if you're going to write a story, they'll tell you that you need to have a setting and you need to have characters, you need to have a conflict, and then you need to resolve it. And those things are true, but in these adventure stories, there are usually many settings, many conflicts, all kinds of things happen, and there's a whole mess made, and by the end, most of it's cleaned up, but it's, it, it's fun. They're fun because they're, they're actual adventures. So let me read this one to you. This is George. He lived with his friend, the man with the yellow hat. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. George was alone this morning looking at a picture book when the doorbell rang. It was the mailman. Here is a letter for you, he said. Put it on your friend's desk. He'll read it to you when he comes home. George is curious. It was not often that somebody wrote him. Too bad he could not read the letter, but maybe he could write one himself. In the top drawer of the desk, there was paper and ink and a fountain pen. George sat down on the floor and began to write but the pen was dry. It needed ink. George would have to fill it. He got a funnel from the kitchen and started pouring ink. But instead of going into the pen, the ink spilled all over and made a big blue puddle on the floor. It was an awful mess. Quickly, George got the blotter from the desk, but that was no help. The puddle grew bigger all the time. George had to think of something else. Why? Soap and water. That's what you clean up with. From the kitchen shelf, he got a big box of soap powder and poured all the powder over the ink. Then he pulled the garden hose through the window, opened the tap, and sprayed water on the powder. Bubbles began to form, and then some lather, and more lather, and more lather, and more lather. So do you know what the word lather means? That is when you get your hands wet and you put some soap on it and you rub, 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 and you get all that thick soapiness, the bubbles and all of that. And so that is lather. And the reason I was thinking about reading this one today is because one of my sons helped with the dishwasher yesterday and he put in the wrong kind of soap. And so uh, we ended up with lather all over our kitchen floor just like this. Lots and lots of soapy, sudsy lather. In no time, the whole room was full of lather. So full indeed that George had to escape in a hurry. When he was safely out of the house, he first turned off the tap. But what next? How could he get rid of all the lather before his friend came home? George sat down in the grass and thought for a long time. He finally had an idea. He would get the big shovel and shovel the lather out the window. But where was the lather? While George had been outside thinking, it had all turned into water. Now the room looked like a lake and the furniture like islands in it. 
that happened in my kitchen too, but it wasn't as deep as all of that. The shovel was no use. A pump was what George needed to get the water out, and he knew just where to find one. He had seen a portable pump at the farm down the road. Look at those cute little animals. You got a snail there, a bird, and some bunnies. The farmer was away working in the fields. Nobody noticed George when he got the pump out of the shed. It was heavy. He would need help to pull it all the way back to the house. Maybe he could tie the goat to the pump and make her pull it. But just as George was about to slip the loop over the goat's head, he was hurled through the air and landed near a pen full of pigs. Look at all those little baby chicks looking at him. The biggest pig was standing near the gate. What if George opened the gate just enough to let him out? A big pig could easily pull a small pump. Carefully, George lifted the latch, and before he knew it, all the pigs had burst out of the pen, grunting and squealing and trying to get away as fast as they could. George was delighted. He had never seen anything like it. For the moment, all of his troubles were forgotten. But now the pigs were all gone, and not a single one was to left to help him with the pump. Look how happy they are running away. Luckily, there were cows grazing nearby. Cows were gentle and strong. It would mean nothing to a cow to pull the pump for him. This time, George was right. The cow did not mind being tied to the pump. She even let him climb on her back, and off they went. George was glad. Now he would soon be home, pump out the room, and everything would be all right. Meanwhile, the farmer and his son had heard the squealing of the pigs. They rushed home from the fields and now had their hands full catching all the pigs. Not until the last pig was safely back in the pen did they have time to look around. And what did they see? A little monkey riding on their cow, making off with their pump. They don't look very happy about it, do they? The chase was on. George and the cow were ahead at first, but the pump was slowing them down. The farmers were getting closer and closer. Now they had almost caught up with them. But where was... George, do you think they're going to care or do you think they're just going to be happy to get their pump back? Look, do you have an idea where he is? Yep, you were right. There he is. Here he was, hiding in a shirt. The farmers had run past him, but on their way home, they had come back over the same road. George did not feel safe hiding in his hiding place. Just then, a truck came rattling down the road. What does that say? It says Museum of Science. George jumped aboard. Monkeys are good at jumping and was gone before the farmers had a chance to see him. The truck drove to a part of town that George had never seen before. At last, it stopped in front of a large building. It was the museum. 
George did not know what a museum was. He was curious. While the guard was busy reading his paper, George slipped inside. He walked up the steps and into a room full of all sorts of animals. At first, George was scared, but then he noticed that they did not move. They were not alive. They were stuffed animals put into the museum so that everybody could get a good look at them. In the next room, George saw something so enormous, it took his breath away. It was a dinosaur. George was not scared this time. He knew it was not real. He looked at the dinosaur and then at the baby dinosaur, and then he saw the palm tree full of nuts. Suddenly, he felt very hungry. He had missed lunch that day. He would climb up and just then he heard footsteps. He had to hide again, but where? dinosaur. Extinct. Do not touch baby dinosaur. Look how cute he is. A family came in to take a look at the dinosaur. They paid no attention to the little monkey who was standing there. The monkey did not move. He stood so still, they thought he was just another stuffed animal. George was glad when they were gone. Now he could pick the nuts. He climbed up the dinosaur's neck and started to pull, but the nuts would not come off. George did not know they were not real either. He pulled harder and harder. The tree began to sway, crash! Down came the tree on the dinosaur's head, down came the dinosaur, and down came George. Look at that. That is a big mess. Guards came rushing in from all sides, and underneath the fallen dinosaur, they found a little monkey. They pulled him out of there and brought him to Professor Wiseman, who was the director of the museum. Professor Wiseman was terribly angry. Lock that naughty monkey up right away, he said, and take him back to the zoo. He must have run away from there. George was carried off in a cage. He felt so ashamed, he almost wished he was dead. Suddenly, the door opened. George! Somebody shouted. It was his friend, the man with the yellow hat. It seems you got yourself into a lot of trouble today, he said. But maybe this letter here will get you out of it. It's from Professor Wiseman. He needs your help for an experiment. I found it on my desk at home, but I couldn't find you anywhere. So I came over here to talk to the professor. And this is what the letter said. Now, if you don't know how to read cursive yet, this might be a tough one. Museum of Science. Dear George, a small spaceship has been built by our experimental station. It is too small for a man, but could carry a little monkey. Would you be willing to go up in it? I have never met you, but I hear that you are a bright little monkey who can do all sorts of things, and that is just what we need. We want you to do something that nobody has ever done before. Bail out of a spaceship in flight. When we flash you a signal, you will have to open the door and bail out with the help of emergency rockets. 
We hope that you are willing and that your friend will permit you to go. Gratefully yours, Professor Wiseman, Director of the Science Museum. Now, when this story was written, it was during a time period where we had what was called a space race. And so several countries were trying to see who could do different things in space first. First people to the moon, first people up in a satellite, first people up in space, first monkey in space, all sorts of things. And so um, the man who wrote this, H.A. Ray, he was also an astronomer, which means a scientist who studies stars. And so he was very interested in all of this, and he incorporated it into this children's book, and I think that's a lot of fun. So you are George, Professor Wiseman said, if I had only known. Of course everything will be forgiven if you are willing to go. They got the smallest size spacesuit for George and all the other things he needed for the flight. What does he need? Checklist. One spacesuit, complete with shoes and gloves. One space helmet. One oxygen tank two emergency rockets, and one parachute. So up in space, there isn't oxygen like we have here on Earth, and so that's why he needs the oxygen tank. They got the smallest size spacesuit for George and all the other things he needed for the flight. Then he, they helped him put them on and showed him how to use them. When everything was ready, a truck drove up with a special television screen mounted to it to watch the flight. They all got on and went, were off to the launching site. They checked all the controls of the spaceship, especially the lever that opened the door. George tried it too. That's pretty cool. The great moment had come. George waved goodbye and went aboard. The door was closed. Professor Wiseman began to count. Five, four, three, two, one, go! He pressed the button and the ship rose into the air, slowly at first, and then faster and faster and higher and higher until they could no longer see it in the sky. But on the screen, they saw George clearly all the time. Now the moment had come for George to bail out. Professor Wiseman flashed the signal. They watched the screen. George did not move. Why didn't he pull the lever? In a few seconds, it would be too late. The ship would be lost in outer space with George in it. They waited anxiously. At last, George began to move slowly as if in a dream, he was groping for the lever. Would he reach it in time? There, he had grabbed it. The door opened. Hooray! George was on his way. Out of the blue, an open parachute came floating down to earth. The truck raced over to the spot where George would land. He's really up high. What a welcome for George. Professor Wiseman hung a big golden medal around his neck because, he said, you are the first living being to come back to Earth from a space flight. And on the medal it said, to George, the first space monkey. Then a newspaper man took his picture and everybody shouted and cheered, even the farmer and his son and the kind woman from next door who had worked for hours to get the water out of the room. I'm proud of you, George, said the man with the yellow hat. I guess the whole world is proud of you today. 
It was the happiest day in George's life. The end.